Hi. Um, uh, I haven't uploaded for a bit because I was working on a couple things and also getting sick. But it's my channel's birthday. You know I wouldn't miss my channel's birthday. I made it a tradition. Um, so I've decided since it is tradition to read bad stories. Um. Uh, I was given permission by my dry bread himself to uh, read stories that are on his uh, creepypasta forum because he doesn't use that section of the forum. I don't even know if he uses the forum itself anymore, um, but the forum's still up. There's a couple stories that he said he would do that just didn't end up happening, and I wanted to read them. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very tight. It's very late at the time of recording this. But uh, this is a little ditty called Out Brief Candle. Um, and I'll post a link in the description. Uh, and also a link to my dry bread's channel because he's a cool guy. Uh, yeah. Dude, your mic keeps cutting out. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, 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 fixed, I fixed it now. <laughs> oh, okay. Here we go. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> so, uh, I'll start this off. Uh, allow me to tell you a story, if you will. I'm I'm gonna, you know, read this with you know a jackass voice because. Sound like Donald Trump right now. <laughs> allow me to tell you a story, if you will. Okay. It's the most horrifying Pokemon <laughs> experience ever. It's it's my most horrifying experience. The, the most terrifying you'll ever hear. You'll never hear scarier, I promise you. <laughs> Hell, I suppose you wouldn't be reading this, though, if you didn't want to hear it. <laughs> but of course you want to hear anything that I want to say. I can't do the voice. <laughs> uh, I was, and still am, a pretty hardcore Pokemon fan. It still sounds like Trump. <laughs> Ever pretty since hard. Ever since my first game, Emerald version, the first game ever. <laughs> the first game of any video game series, Pokemon Emerald. Yeah, we're, we're, we're off to a good start. Oh, yes. <laughs> I got it when I was only seven or so. Because of my youth, I thought my real name was too dumb to name my character after. So I feel called out here. <laughs> I wanted to name him Lightning. I loved Storms as a kid. I don't care, author, but the name was too long, so I settled on the abbreviated form Lida. Lida these nuts in your <laughs> Even though Emerald was my first game, I had gone back a while ago to the older games to give them a try too. I loved them all, every single one of them. But Emerald was always my favorite. Spelled wrong. It was my first game after all. But sadly, I lost my copy of my beloved game. What a stupid term. Beloved game. Dude, <laughs> relax. It's a game. So I turned to ROMs. Oh, what a monster. Thankfully, I had a good computer to support this. Oh. He, had a, he had a GT, <laughs> uh, like, like 1030 or something. I, I love computer. I love the implication that using a ROM uh, requires Wait, no. such a, a, a strong computer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it's like okay, maybe. You know, maybe for the Switch, but like for the GBA, you can run that shit on a phone fairly yeah, smoothly, have, like, extremely smoothly, actually. Yeah, he had a GT seven ten. <laughs> <laughs> a few years before this Grab it. this incident. <laughs> I'm about to tell you though, I was diagnosed with a severe case of chronic manic depression. Alright, go on. There were a couple of voices to accompany this ailment as well, which isn't how chronic fucking manic depression works. At all. I, I even looked it up. That's not how it fucking works. If I had a dime for every creepypasta we read, read with the... Uh where the protagonist has chronic manic depression and hears voices in their head. I'd have two dimes. Seriously? Chronic mm. manic depression? 
I, I can't say dissociative identity disorder or else people are gonna know that I stole this from Jessica. Yeah, okay. stage four men uh, mental illness. <laughs> I have stage four brain rot. <laughs> Skippity dump dump dump. Uh, let's see. They were very mean voices, mind you. When I was feeling down, I usually went to friends for help. But on the occasions that they weren't available because they got sick of my bullshit making up stuff about hearing voices, I always went back to Pokemon because they can't judge me. Yeah, Pokemon, like, yeah, forget, forget your, uh, uh... I can't even come up with a joke. This is just <laughs> this is just cringe already. Okay, uh, cringe already. like, yeah, who needs who needs a therapist? You just got Pokemon and like, that's <laughs> just so easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. all right, let's see. The other games helped some, but none compared to my old friend Emerald version. God, is this fucking Pokemon Dead Channel 2? My best friend, Fervor, the Pikachu! Uh, uh, the whole- My best friend, Paul. <laughs> Yay. This whole incident started, coincidentally, on one of those feeling down days. Oh. Take antidepressants, they do wonders. When my friends weren't there to help, so they were sick of your shit. So I got home from school, threw down my pack, and turned on my ROM of Emerald to bring me up. As the title screen played, I was taken back to memories of my digital friends. Is, is anybody gonna realize that referring to your uh, Pokemon in your team is your friends or your digital friends is like really fucking sad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, where, where did I go? Oh, okay. I loved my ferocious Sceptile, which nothing says ferocious like a fucking wood gecko. My oh, level yes. 76 Minon, why we had to, uh, specify his level, I don't know, who, to put it frankly, kicked ass. A very strong Skarmory had to... I've to I'm gonna rip apart every single one of these. And the legendary Groudon and Kyogre. I of love them all. Has, huh? Of course, he, of course he has legendaries. I, it's just he, definitely a child. I love them all to death, but none could compare to my favorite, Rayquaza. Okay. It was my first level 100 Pokemon. Of course this fucking toddler has three legendaries. Like, this clown's rocking three main story legendaries in his team, just cause. It was my first level 100 Pokemon, this feat uh, being achieved by countless solo trips to the Elite Four. Okay. As the continue option appeared, I was already smiling. Somebody really likes the fucking intro sequence. Waiting for my beloved Pokemon. Can we ban that phrase? <laughs> and Sprite Lida to meet me, ready for adventure. I pressed A and got ready for the nostalgia. That's when things got a bit weird. It wasn't weird when you said that chronic manic depression gives you voices in your head. Uh, get tested for schizophrenia, please. Uh, but no, no, now shit's going off the fucking rails. I found myself in my bed in Little Root. I don't want to know what you're doing in your bed at home, alright? It doesn't... Nighttime's not a thing, Jeffrey. Yeah, he's thinking about his beloved Pokemon. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his, uh, his, uh, Skeptile, his level 76 Minin, uh, the Vaporeon in his, uh, oh, Pazipox. You no, know, it's like, it's, his, just, uh, it's just... His, favorite, Gardevoir. Oh, yeah, and of course, Gardevoir. It, yeah. It's Gen 3, so, you know, Low Punny may or may not exist in this story yet. Mm. Uh, but if but if it does, I'm sure he's got a hug pillow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or body pillow, whatever. It, this was odd, because I didn't remember saving there. Oh, well, I thought to myself, I must have just forgotten I saved there last. It's been agents, ages, agents, wow. It's been CIA since I last played. <laughs> 
So I walked my sprite down the stairs and got started on the day's tasks. You know, the daily tasks of walk around in the goddamn grass. That's when I noticed the second thing that was off about this save file. Mom's sprite was standing next... No, oh, sorry. I don't want to disparage this great story. Uh, standing right in front of the TV. My hair's in the way. <laughs> Just a side note, my hair's in the way. Oh, no, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, she was, yeah, she was just watching the Saul Goodman, you know, just lawyer up, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, she, up, was yeah. just, she was just checking out the tokusatsu porn that she found. <laughs> I was reminded of when she's watching a Latios or Latios report after you become champion, triggering the corresponding Pokemon to begin flying around the region. But I had already been named champion. Sandbagger. For quite some time ago. Sandbagger! My curiosity got the better of me. Cliche! And I pressed A to talk to her. Mom! Lida! Fucking hate you. Come here. You have to see this shit. You, wait, I found this under your bed. You got explaining to do. My sprite moved over to the TV and tuned into the program, which appeared to be a news report. A text box appeared as I watched. We are now live at Sinopolis City. Where a massive storm is swirling above. That's not how news people talk. People fear the worst as Juan is ordering a citywide directive to find shelter. This concludes this special broadcast. I love how it just immediately ends. Like, hey, yeah. there's a storm! Uh, gym leader's doing some stuff. He's localizing people. Is it, are gym leaders also the mayor? I don't know. Yeah, uh, there's like a... There's a stage six hurricane headed towards the top of this, and like, anyways. Uh, <laughs> anyways, back to your regular scheduled program. People are dying. <laughs> uh, isn't that weird? Said my mom before heading back to the table. I tried talking to her again, but all it accomplished was an unnecessary healing for my Pokemon. As per the norm. Maybe this was like the storm when Groudon and Kyogre feuded, I thought. But that's impossible. I caught them both with Rayquaza to boot. Again with the sandbagging. I have to go there, I thought to myself. <laughs> okay. I moved my sprite outside and opened up the Pokemon tab from the start menu. Yeah, but who says all... I moved my sprite? <laughs> yeah, just say I went outside. We know what you're talking about. He's so worried we're going to be like, oh, so you just walked outside in real life. Because, you know, this thing is happening in the game. Yeah, no. I'm, re I'm, maybe, I'm brain dead. Maybe the rider should go outside. <laughs> Author, please touch grass. Or at least main character needs to touch uh, grass. Because main character may not be author. So, I, I, like I said, I don't want to bully author here. I'm sure they tried their hardest. Yeah. Like a decade ago. So, you know, maybe the sandbagging was the friends we made along the way. The real treasure was the sandbagging we did a decade later. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, but there were only three Pokemon in my party. Weird. I usually have six dot dot dot. Uh, all that was left was the trio of Groudon, Kyogre, and Rayquaza. Okay, well, my expectations are subverted. I thought he was going to say the legendaries took off first. I selected Rayquaza and opted to fly to Pseudopolis. When the destination map appeared, there was a dark cloud above Pseudopolis. Okay. Uh, and a red X for the city icon should have been. Duh, you moron! One of my voices scolded me, being a bully, apparently. You can't fly into a giant storm like that, tell that to Skyward Sword. <laughs> Idiot, dot dot dot, my other voice mumbled. I groaned, realizing that I made these voices up and they don't actually exist, but also realizing that I had to fly to Moss Thief and surf there. I gave Rayquaza the new coordinates, Coordinates? What, are you telling him latitude and longitude? 
Psycho. And set on my investigation of the storm. Oh, investigation. Oh. What is this, Persona 4? We gotta call Teddy, and he's useless, so... Uh, surfing and diving there wasn't too much of a hassle, thanks to my in-party Kyogre. Again with the sandbagging. Oh my. <laughs> He's like, oh, by the way, guys, three legendaries in my team, you know? If anybody wants to, uh, suck my dick in the comments, I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, when I finally surfaced into the city, I could see a storm similar to that if when Groudon and Kyogre dueled before with the same weather animations, music, and everything. Oh. If his other Pokemon are fighting each other and causing that shit, I'm... Don't do it. Uh, things got even weirder because, you know, this ROM hack is already going off the fucking rails, apparently. It's a, it's a ROM, and clearly it's a ROM hack. Uh, things got even weirder than this already was. Oh, okay. Things got weirder than this already was when I came to shore. Firstly, as soon as I landed, a text box appeared. Kyogre has fled. Great, I thought sarcastically. Not even questioning this. <laughs> he was one of my best party members. Why are you not questioning this? <laughs> like it just brushes it off it's like oh great three of the Pokemon disappeared right out the gate and then your other one just ditched you right like right to your face and you're like oh wonderful yeah this is the best part of my fucking day so far uh let's see checking my uh, the party screen confirmed my woes <laughs> well I so hard Kyogre doesn't want to hang out with me Kyogre was no more. Oh, man. He found out he was in the story, and he decided to take the easy way out. <laughs> it was like, oh, God. Story. He committed Persona 3 Evoker. But that wasn't the end of the perplexity. Oh, thesaurus. Whenever I got within five or so squares of the NPCs, they'd all run into the nearest house. They clearly did not want to be around main character. I tried the doors to each house, but they were all locked. Yeah, I would hope so. As I made my way, perplexed, around the crater of the city, I found one NPC still at his dutiful post. Shut up. The man guarding the cave of origin. I tried talking to him. He only said, IT IS GONE! In caps. Had to scream it. Uh, then a massive flash of lightning lit up the screen. Oh, just like the character's not name. Uh, as the flash faded, the man was replaced with a gravestone. <laughs> you know, the, uh... The and he's not questioning this? Yeah, this no. Person's not the, the Undertakers, man, they just, they, they're very efficient in the Pokemon world. You don't, you don't understand. You don't understand. Uh, I tried to inspect the graves, uh, yeah, the gravestone. The game froze up for a few seconds, but when it unfroze, another text of Fox appeared. This rock appears to be breakable. <laughs> Would you like to use Rock Smash? You want to desecrate a grave? Confused? I hit yes. Oh yeah, let's let's do it. Let's let's fuck up this grave. Let's do it. Uh, Groudon used Rock Smash. What the hell? I thought. I would never teach a legendary move as crappy as Rock Smash. But the... <laughs> That's what he questions? Yeah. Th that his Pokemon has fucking Rock Smash? Not that he's destroying a grave that just appeared? I don't know, yeah. And why isn't he turned... Not turned off the game yet? Exactly. If this is, you know, weirding you out this much, just turn off the game or restart. I don't know, yeah. If this was me, I would have just, like... Like, your, off your whole team has just ditched you, I'm pretty sure, or at least most of it. The gravestone did smash, regardless of my bewilderment. I don't think the game is aware of how you feel, author. Right afterwards, however, a text box appeared. Groudon has fled. 
sure enough, he too was gone from my party. Only Rayquaza remained. Sighing. Because this is so dramatic. I walked into the cave. The cave seemed normal at first. It had been ages since I went in last. I get it. You already said that it's been ages since you played the fucking game. So of course it's been ages since you've been in here. But I definitely didn't remember the crystals in the cave being as jet black as they were. Uh, even more unusual was the fact that in the center of the cave, there was an up ladder. That's new, I thought. Only seeing something even more puzzling. Does, does your fake voices come back, or was that just like a one-off? I found myself at the base of Ma Mount Pyre. That's not how that works. <laughs> the fog was almost impermeable. The sorest moment. As opposed to the normal transparency. There was no music either, only eerie silence. Heedless of this, I climbed further. What a good idea. Things are clearly going wrong. Let's keep going. Quickly reaching the top. For once in this twisted scenario, I found <laughs> twisted scenario. I found a recognizable scene. The fog was a little less dense, allowing me to see the red and blue orbs and the elders guarding them, just as it always has been. I approached them hoping for an explanation of sorts. However, when I was within about three tiles of them, the screen faded to black. Oh, cliche. When it came back, I was only a few spaces further from the elders. In the middle of them and I, though, was a gigantic funeral pyre. A funeral pyre on Mount Pyre? Who would have guessed? To my horror, I could make out the lifeless body of my beloved Rayquaza being burned in the pyre. How would the... What the heck is even going on? <laughs> okay, so how does that work if uh, Rayquaza has, like, maybe two overworld sprites? One being him curled up, but still, you know... Poking his head up, very obviously alive, and the other one is, you know, him flying, also very obviously alive. It's it's not gonna tell me. I I feel dumb for even asking. I like uh, we still haven't gone back to. The yeah, <laughs> not even questioning the voices or the lack thereof. I instinctively tried to check my party to see if it was still there somehow. Why? You you somehow confirm that this is your Rayquaza, so why the fuck would your Rayquaza be alive and well and also dead in front of you? It's Schrodinger's cat, not Schrodinger's fucking Rayquaza. <laughs> However, I soon realized spelled wrong that I wasn't in control anymore. The elders turned to each other. One shuffled its feet, indicating it was talking. Okay. We must bring it back and stop this. The other responded, saying, But how? You know what must be done, the first retorted. I almost read that as a different word that I would get in trouble for saying. With that, they walked away from each other to retrieve the orbs from their pedestals, which, you know, that's such a long walk away, like half a fucking tile. I watched in horror as the orbs began to glow. Oh no, it, it's doing a thing that's normal in the games. Something descended from the top of the screen. It was a big question mark icon. It was Decamark. Oh no! Uh, the same as the one displayed when you don't have a picture of a Pokemon in the Pokedex, also known as Decamark. It seemed to float down and into Rayquaza's lifeless body. I only feared what would come next. Rayquaza's body jerked and spasmed around a bit. How would you see this on a Game Boy Advance? When the movement stopped, I watched in confusion as his entire body became devoid of color. I like how he spells color correctly, but not realize. Uh, he was all monochromatic. Another word for devoid of color. And his artwork had been redone in a much more conspicuous. Pixels, what? 
He roared in a sickening, distorted cry as he came back to what could hardly be called life. Then he, he then floated around in front of the pyre where he once laid. A text box appeared as he spoke. I'll never forget what he said. Life is but a walking shadow. Play Persona. A uh, poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage. This is, he's, this motherfucker is quoting Shakespeare. What the bloody hell, Govna? I said out loud. I've never seen a Pokemon quote Shakespeare in any game before. I've never seen anybody quote Shakespeare in Pokemon before at all, Pokemon or otherwise. The text box reappeared, finishing the quote. Out, brief candle. Oh, look, it's the title. With that, the pyre extinguished, thrusting the entire screen into pitch black darkness. <sighs> God, we're not done. Oh. The screen stayed black for a few seconds before flashing black and white. Uh, how could it flash black if it was already black? As if a battle was beginning. Okay. Sure enough, my back sprite showed as Rayquaza faced me. Question mark, question mark, question mark appeared. I think at this point, using three question marks for a name uh, also counts as a cliche also. Uh, in reality, its name on its status bar was nothing but a jumble of code and glitch. I used question mark, question mark, question mark, so you can understand who's talking. But strangely, the sprite remained intact. You could just say Rayquaza. Just saying. Uh, except the crude pixelization and the monochrome color scheme, we went back to spelling color incorrectly. So it's not intact, which means the author is lying to us. Its level was zero, and its health bar was non-existent. Question mark, question mark, tried to flee. I could then feel chills echo throughout my body. Sorry, I misread that. I could then feel, feel chills echo throughout my body. <laughs> As Number <a> 15. <laughs> Number 15. This fucking Rayquaza. As a full detailed pictures of the two elders faded behind Rayquaza holding the orbs. What, so a cutscene? Uh, their faces were what got to me, though. They had hideously creepy smiles, of course they did, and their eyes were nothing more than huge black dots staring right at me. Oh, author's vain. Evidently, they were preventing quote-unquote Rayquaza, if it could still even be called that, from fleeing. However, battle re proceeded as normal as it could get. Okay, without... <laughs> With me sending out my first Pokemon. Okay. It must be Rayquaza. Not this glitched up monstrosity. Despite the fact that you confirmed that your Rayquaza is the glitched up monstrosity. I remember thinking as the Pokeball was thrown out. But to my dismay. The Pokemon that emerged was not my beloved friend. <laughs> of course it isn't you imbecile. One of my voices yelled. Yay my favorite character's back. Bully voice. Rayquaza was in the pyre. Oddly, it was a Reggie Rock that came out of the ball, cause that makes perfect sense. I didn't remember putting any of three of the legendary Reggies in my party. Not even Reggie Fizeme. He said his body is Reggie. I mean, ready. Oh God. But I wasn't too surprised by this given move. Uh, given everything else. It was level 100. Oddly, all of the move slots were empty, but the arrow could still move along the four blank options. You know, we've been reading this for a little bit now, and I think I'm more annoyed than scared. I selected one, but Rayquaza got to move first. It used Dream Eater, instantly fainting my Regirock. That's not how that works. The health bar didn't even slide. It just dot 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 vanished. Question mark, question mark, question mark was hit with recoil. What the fuck is happening? Flashed on the screen. But Rayquaza didn't have any health, I thought. 
What I saw instead mortified me. Wounds suddenly appeared on the Rayquaza sprite. There was no blood or gore because Pokemon. Instead, the gashes and cuts were oozing blank pixels and jumbled code. All right, that's an interesting thing. I'll give it that. I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it this one point out of a million issues. Uh, my next Pokemon was called out without any consent from me, as if the game's gonna ask for your fucking consent to send out a new Pokemon in a fight. It. This was a Regice. Same level, same quote-unquote moves. Don't get lippy with me, author. Rayquaza used Parish Song next. I figured this would finally give me a turn or two to text out these blank moves, but I was dumbfounded when Parish Song instantly one-hit KO'd my Pokemon. Again, what the fuck is happening? Rayquaza took more recoil, with bruises and scars ripping even more across his body. Okay, uh, my last Pokemon was the only logical option left. Registeel. I was gonna laugh so hard if he's like, oh, it'll definitely be Registeel, and it's like a fucking why not. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would actually be good. Change him from a, a creepy pasta to a funny pasta. Uh, Rayquaza used Pain Split because that's a spooky move to finish the job. Taking with it taking more recoil as the battle screen faded out with Ray, uh, with Rayquaza flying in front of me it appears that the storm from Sidopolis has spread here as a bolt of lightning just lit up the screen uh, from the yeah from the darkness I thought it was formed that, that was on me oh, no. much <laughs> like a Pokemon's flash would the remaining poke of oh, fog, sorry. The remaining fog floated away. Suddenly, another blinding flash bleached the screen. Don't put bleach on your screen. Similar to the one at the Cave of Origin. When the overworld faded back in, the elders had turned into skeletons. Very spooky. Glad it's on theme. Rayquaza had two, but the pattern normally found on its back seemed to have separated from his body. Forming a second pseudo Rayquaza alongside the skeleton of the first. What the fuck did I just read? The orbs once held by the elders were now floating above their corpses, both jet black, because that's a spooky color. The skeletons of the elders seemed to push the two Rayquazas forwards. Oh, sorry, towards my sprite using the orbs. Oh, so the skeletons are alive. Undertale. <laughs> It's just Undertale, there's two skeletons. We know them well. The dragons moved slowly forward pixel by pixel until they stood right in front of my character. A black text box appeared with pixelated white writing. Question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> Sorry, I had to, I had to do it. Uh, this phrase kept on repeating. I like how they call laughing a phrase. Mm. Seemingly, eternally, a soul phrase, if you will. Ah, oh, Persona 3 reference. <laughs> Sorry, I <laughs> fucking love Persona 3. Uh, the text box seemed to almost overflow with this text. Okay, so clearly, uh, Glitchy Rayquaza is just Joker now. But it never stopped coming. God, if I had a dime. Or as, uh, as Smash Mouth would say, uh, it starts coming and they don't stop coming. Uh, it only ceased when I unplugged my computer from the wall. I didn't touch the ROM file for a few days, but I finally let my curiosity get the better of me. I like how he just now decides to do this. Like, yeah. After all that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He's like, you know, all this weird shit happened, and it was very upsetting to me for some reason, but, uh... I'll, I'll just keep going, why not? What's the worst that could happen? I had to find out if this was the end. What, with... The fucking Rayquaza spamming your screen with Joker text? 
My body's shaking. Okay. <laughs> why why do you play video games if it's this taxing? I clicked on the icon and turned on the game. Everything seemed normal. Even the old continue option seemed unaffected. It wasn't affected before. Uh, I selected it with an air of caution, though. Uncertainly... Er, oh. With an air of, un of caution, uncertainty, and suspicion. He thought it was sus. I found myself watching the truck animation at the beginning of the game. While I was excited, though, I was directly in the back... Oh, I was directly back in my bed at Little Roop. I found everything in my room normal. There was no music. That's not normal. Liar. This added to the eerie feeling that was beginning to fester in my mind. When I went downstairs, I saw my mom wasn't there. <gasps> oh. So she got tired of your nonsense, too. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Out, brief candle. Oh, there it is. There's, there's a title. <laughs> there <laughs> Insert the, the fucking meme with uh, Family Man. <laughs> he said it! The computer made a very loud crackling snap. Well, hold on. There's a computer. I like how... <laughs> the story. I like how... Um, he's just now mentioning that it was on... Uh, a computer. For all I was aware, I thought he was playing it on his phone. Uh, I turned off the ROM, terrified. When I turned it back on, everything seemed normal again. But when I clicked on the continue option, a loud glitchy screech emanated from the speakers. Yeah, sounds about right. I shut off the ROM once more. I took a minute to catch my breath, because, you know, it's, it's so fucking physically taxing to click on things main character needs to go outside <laughs> uh, but, you know after this startling event before clicking the file oh good I'm glad we're doing this shit again the only thing to greet me was a message from the computer the file has been corrupted and cannot be used Windows will delete the file to protect data data I knew the game could never be played again you're a fool for thinking it'd all be okay the first voice of mine said Good riddance, said the other. And then the third one said, Stop downloading tokusatsu porn or else your computer is going to get fucked like this. <laughs> and that's that's the end of this uh, thing. Uh, I'm glad we got a guest appearance right at the end from uh, fake voices in his head. Uh, do you have any final thoughts for this fucking stupid ass story cuz i don't other than the whole voices thing pissed me off honestly uh i i i can i don't even have any word <laughs> that's <laughs> this might be one of the worst things we've read, read up to this point <laughs> Watch as we find this guy's, like, uh, fucking about me section, and it's, like, a family member or something. I, ah, Emerald meant the world to him, and he got hit by Rayquaza or something. Got iron-tailed in the stomach by Rayquaza. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, uh, uh, I thought this was... A good idea buried under like terrible things. Uh, the whole voices thing was clearly just a shitty ripoff of Jessica. Uh, the voices were completely unnecessary as well. I wanna. Oh yeah, point they out. they added nothing to the story. They showed up like every twice. Time, I know, yeah. And every time it showed up, I was just like, it really. Like, like, if like you had, if you had changed it to like schizophrenia, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that that, that's that all automatically, you mean. automatically, uh, makes it more interesting. So if you're having like a really bad situation, I don't have schizophrenia, so I don't know what it's like to, you know, skits out. 
Is that a term? Oh, yeah. Just skits out? Uh, you know, I, I've never had a, a schizo moment, but like, if it's, if it's like how TV shows and movies portray, which is probably wrong, uh, you know, it would give more credence to the weird shit that author is experiencing, uh, as well as the, the wacky voices. You know. I'm not saying it would make it completely believable, but I mean, it wouldn't sound completely ridiculous, stupid, and possibly borderline offensive to say, well, I have chronic manic depression, which I'm pretty sure is just bipolar disorder. Which that doesn't even give you any sort of voices in your head that's... Yeah. <laughs> give this one minus 5 out of 10, because that, yeah. that pissed me off. Yeah, I'm giving this negative 400 out of 10. <laughs> Honestly, it probably would have been better if one of the voices in his head said lawyer up. <laughs> and then this whole situation could have been avoided. The second voice in his head just starts going, Do you know you have rights? The Constitution says you do. Come,